Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is your host, Debbie Dashinger. The show has been nominated for a Two People's Choice Podcast Awards for a Webby Award. I recently just won the Coalition of Visionary Resources Award for the Best Radio and Podcast Show. And Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger is listed in WELP Magazine as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. Thank you so much for being on the journey. A little bit later, I'm going to be bringing on a very much returned guest and a very beloved guest, Vita Kukulhoff, who's going to be channeling yet again the beautiful being called Arjun of the Yael. Very excited for that because Arjun has specifically requested that we do this on top news. Really, I think Arjun just wants to reach and help everybody through this time. So it's a very beautiful gift. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do energy work out into the world, which means you can take a class, become a facilitator. It's global. Go to Dr. Dane here, H E E R dot com or accessconsciousness.com. And I am Debbie Dashinger. Great to meet you, e meet you. And I do visibility media work out into the world. Specifically, that means I am a book writing coach. And if you would like any coaching, you can join our ongoing group, which meets twice a month on Zoom from anywhere in the world. It's debbiedashinger.com slash visible visionaries. Also, I take your book to a guaranteed international bestseller, and I show you how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts for massive results. You can get some free gifts on how to be visible yourself right now. And go to debbie-inger.com slash gift. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. So today, yes, we're being gifted with a channeling session through Vita Kolhoff, and the being that comes through is Arjun of the Yael. When Vita was just three years old, she started having multidimensional contact with different types of extraterrestrials. If you folks are interested in more about Vita, and I know you will be after this show, just go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, Google Vita's name, my name, and my goodness, I've lost count four, six times, somewhere in there she's been on the show. It's worth it. They're, they've all been incredibly different information. Further, the Yael interact directly with the beings from the Pleiades, who reside in the fifth and sixth dimensions. Vidika and Yael serve as a gateway to bring forth information from the greater universe, parallel realities, as well as messages from clients' higher selves. You can learn more about her and get in touch at designforawareness.com. It's design, the number four, awareness.com. And with that, I welcome the amazing Vita Kulhoff to Dare to Dream. Thank you for coming back on the show. I am so grateful you're here. Thank you, Debbie, for having me. And it's always <laughs> such a joy and such an honor. <laughs> I, I think it's only been two months since you've been on the show, which feels like a long time already, right? There's been a lot of life. Has anything changed for you? in what you're offering, what you're doing or being out in the world that you want to give us an update on? Um, I'm just constantly uh, exploring uh, how and through what routes uh, information can be sure, shared in a more effortless way. So there will be, um, I'm, I'm going to work with a, a friend and we're going to actually um, do regular Q&As with Arjun, kind of like you and me are doing right now. And um, um, the idea is that there will be a library on my website where oh, people nice. can download mm. uh, on topic. So uh, like one on love, one on, I don't know, uh, money or manifestation, like all the topics that we run into in life on a regular basis. So I'm just starting to build that platform and hoping to have some of that material on there um, by the end of October, beginning of November already. Yes. And do people go to designforawareness.com for that? Yes, they do. Yeah. Okay. Do you connect with Arjun when you're not channeling? I do. Uh, not on a super regular basis, as in, well, it's like 
um, there's divine synchronicity in all of this. So when I uh, shift my attention in his direction, and I'm always, you know, <laughs> for me, that has a direction to it, which is literally a certain motion. <laughs> uh, that's how it feels for me. Um, I know he's immediately there. So I can actually just pop in and ask a question. I can do that. Mm -hmm. But when I usually kind of, and this is just my personal character, uh, I like figuring life out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, I don't always immediately run and ask a question. I may postpone that quite a bit. Um, and when I really have a question, I like it's urgent. I will usually ask before sleeping be because for me to receive the answer or the download in a dream is the most profound way, one of the most profound ways to receive an answer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, then the whole daytime focus is to decide. And it's there's just something for me. Dreams have always been incredible messengers for me. So it's a nice little alleyway directly to really get my attention. Yeah, and you know, when you have an urgent question, usually the question or the answer also entails more details. So it's really good to be in a very open and receptive state to then fully let it in. So that's, there are moments where I where I feel that I'm in, in that type of a crossroads and then I ask a question in that way. Yeah. Do you have a sense, Vidika, is our June family? Is this a relationship you've had before and your soul just made an agreement to be on earth and to allow this to come through to help us? Or what? what is that relationship? Do you know what the ancestry is there? The ancestry, that's such a crazy question in a sense because they're from the future. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I actually, I'm not sure if there is a, like if I'm an ancestor of him, you know what I mean? But there might be a genetic link. Ancestor was the words that came before, right? <laughs> They're just checking the language. Yes, it's, exactly. Yeah, that's it's the, the inception and then, then yes. whomever builds on it. So it, so yes. you would be here and Arjun would be, well, and you and I both know, even though I would say Arjun's in the future, that doesn't exist because all time is now. So. exactly so first of all that's why i'm like oh is this a question that how am i gonna wrap my mind around this um but uh well we as as humans modern day humans that we consider ourselves to be today we are their ancestors we are the life givers to mm -hmm. some degree genetically to the yael because they are you know the product quote unquote of a hybridization program that used our genetics so there is yeah a dna connection there for sure how directly it is between me and him exactly i don't know i never asked <laughs> i never checked uh, i do consider him family like he feels like an extension of you know my circles somebody who's there who's present um and, and of course it's somewhat different because he's in the yeah like for me like if you need to hang a bookshelf <laughs> don't ask our dude <laughs> so it's kind of like different dimension but to have or to know that you have guides in whatever way shape or form can be very soothing and i really do believe we all have them and for people who doubt that they might have guides um, play with synchronicity. It's the root of least resistance to see or open up to, if you're curious about that at all, uh, to open up to the possibility of, you know, um, having connection with, you know, non-physical or high dimensional guides in your own life. Because non-physical um, non beings communicate very effortlessly with us through synchronicity. And I mean, you know, that's typical quote-unquote coincidences of things showing up when you think of them and um yeah when you need a hand in your house even with something practical and then suddenly spontaneously a friend coming by offering their assistance that's a wonderful synchronicity and if you asked your guides for assistance and that shows up and not just that but this friend also mentions a very random story about a color or an animal or something very specific that to you symbolizes the presence of that guide 
it's things like that, that that we can really play with to get a type of confirmation if you will mm -hmm. but the pitfall might be that the rational mind insists on confirmation and then energetically you would be pushing it away so the way to go about this is to remain as much as possible in your heart non-insisting mm. and allowing and that's the energy vibration on which they um, can uh, most openly communicate with us so yeah for everybody who doubts that they may have guides we all have them in my perspective mm. but this is one way to start play with that and explore it a little bit okay I love that uh and that harkens to something I had a reading recently, and that's what a lot of what kept coming through is look for the signs. We're here, look for the signs. Like, oh, okay. yes. And yes. they got very specific. Do you see 11 11 a lot? And it's like, that's so weird because mm -hmm. I never understood that. It was never a thing for me. And then about uh, three and a half years ago, it started happening. And so I was like, well, that that's not random. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you could have said a lot of other things, but that one was very specific. So I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, like those mm -hmm. confirmations. You are not alone. You are heard. You're cared for. You're seen. I think yeah. people really need that right now to know they may not have, not have the gifts you do in that level of connection. And I think that has a kind of solace to it. But to know even if that's not particularly my gift or it's not been developed to see and hear at that level, still you are here. I'm being facilitated. Mm -hmm. I'm being loved right now yeah it may come through in different ways that's just yeah. exactly like you said um i do think we all have the potential for this type of open connection but it may not be necessarily relevant to have that with an et for instance yeah. uh, but we do all innately carry that ability within us to have that open a connection with our own higher self which is your intuition which is your inner knowing which is that you know um crystalline discernment that tells you when you're about to 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 turn right in traffic or something no don't do that today and then you don't and turns out you know when you look into the street while you pass by it that something like an accident happened there you know stuff like that we are all divinely guided first of all and above all by our own higher self and that connection we all have and then of course you have people who um to whose life it turns out to be relevant to have a specific connection with, you know, the one or the other thing, which is still a co-creation because even specific connections crystallize for or with a person because the collective asks for it. So it's a really interesting dance of, you know, and I always say, don't compare yourself to anybody else. You are absolutely unique. Whatever connections you've got going on are irreplaceable by anybody else perhaps your way of quote-unquote channeling is to create a painting to write a song to do a dance your magnificent smile that you share with people randomly in the street and yeah. brightens their day True. sometimes a smile can be a stronger impact moment than a thousand words or whatever how many transmissions yeah. so or you know there are so many ways wherein we can channel high vibrational mm. uh energy towards one another uh and i and i have no doubts that we all innately carry that connection to source mm. that we can always tap into yummy i like that <laughs> so without further ado Yes. Shall we invite Arjun on the show? And I assume you're going to lead us into a meditation to start with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for folks who are watching on YouTube or listening to the podcast, please don't be driving a car or operating <gasps> machinery. It is a profound, fast, but very deep meditation that Vidika and Arjun take us through. So please put all that away so you can be fully present in your body and enjoy this transition and transmission. All right. So for those who've got a comfy chair, <laughs> everybody get relaxed. Uh, I'm just gonna do this little meditation and if you've tuned in uh, with these transmissions between uh, Arjun and Debbie before, then you've heard it before, but every single time it does you know, add some depth to the whole thing if you choose to join in. 
So um, yeah, I invite everybody to take a nice few deep breaths in and out. And then gently bring your attention to your heart space if you like. And imagine that from your heart, a silver line of energy begins to flow down through your body, down through your belly, down through your legs, all the way down to your feet, through the building and into the ground. And imagine that silver line sinking deeper and deeper, moving effortlessly through all the layers of the earth until eventually you reach the center of the earth, the heart of the planet. And whatever this looks like to you right now in your imagination, it is absolutely perfect. And you're being warmly welcomed to make a strong connection to this place in your own way. And when you feel that you've made that connection, imagine that earth energy then flowing through your silver line Traveling back up, same way you came, through all the layers, returning to the house that you're in, the room that you're in. And imagine that earth energy then flowing into your body, starting at the soles of your feet and moving up to your knees, along the way, embracing every single cell. And from your knees to your hips, the same thing happens. Every cell begins to resonate in harmony with that earth vibration. through your belly, your lower back, up along the spine and into your chest. And with the next deep and calm breath in, imagine that earth energy then flowing into your heart and filling it up completely. And then if you wish, imagine that same silver line going on a second journey, this time moving upward from your heart through your throat, through your head, out through the crown chakra, through the building and into the sky. And higher and higher, beyond the clouds, beyond the ozone layer, and into the universe, your silver line flies effortlessly, this time amongst the planets and the stars, until eventually it reaches the central sun of your solar system. And here too, you're being warmly welcomed to make a strong connection to the center point of the sun, however you imagine you would like to do that right now. And when you feel that you have in your very own way also made that connection, imagine, if you will, that solar energy too then flowing through your silver line, traveling back across the universe, returning to your blue little magical planet that you call Earth, returning to the continent, the country, the region, the house and eventually room that you're now choosing to be focused in. And imagine, if you will, then, that solar energy too flowing into the body, starting at the top of the head, moving through the head, energizing the cells along the way, through the throat, back of the neck, into your chest, between and around your shoulder blades. And with the next deep and calm breath in, imagine that solar energy too then flowing into your heart, and merging with the earth energy vibration that was already present there in a never ending golden spiral. And if you wish, you can put one or both of your hands on your heart for a moment to anchor there, to land there. For this is where heaven meets earth within you. It is a door through which we speak, the window through which we see in this moment of your time. We are here, we thank you for the invitation of this co-creation. Dear friend, how can we be of service? Oh, thank you. Uh, oh, thank you. First of all, I am just so excited to spend time with you again. And I, I just feel really honored that this is a creation in my lifetime to know you and in the way that we can serve people. So thank you for trusting me and for the relationship we've developed. I'm super grateful. 
Oh, thank you. We are equally honored and excited. And thank you for the platform that you are providing on your planet for others to tune in with and to allow them for a, you could say, space or bandwidth wherein they can choose to align in a more profound way if they so choose to with their own higher self, with their own connection to the all that is. Great. Okay. Well, I want to start out by asking you more about yourself before we get into global news. All right. Would you describe Arjun? What do you look like? What All right. Your size, your head, your clothing, eyes, hands, all of that. All right. Oh, thank you. Well, you would consider me pretty human by appearances. The hair is light blonde with somewhat of a wave, you could say, mid-long. Check out the hands of the channel. It will get about here, the hair. At this moment of my incarnation, the existence, as I experience it, five fingers at every hand, five toes at each foot. We are as Yahyal very humanoid looking we could walk in the street and you would not necessarily notice us being from another dimensional reality other than perhaps we may emanate somewhat of a glow and then obviously we come with a pretty profound energy vibration that emanates from us as well this translates to some of you as light. So we might walk around a little bit like a lamp in that sense. And that might give it away that we aren't just the average quote unquote human being. But since we do contain as Yahyel so much of your human DNA, we look very much like you when you are talking about my height. Now, the channel has been, you could say, programmed to think in meters and centimeters. You would think about one meter and 75 centimeters of your length. You may wish to use a converser, converser on your internet to calculate that into your feet. There is the, if you wish, color of my eyes that you would describe as bluish, greenish, a mix of these two. The skin is what you would generally call white or pale in that sense. We have developed different skin colors in our own hybrid race. There are different colorations in that sense. This is a relatively new phenomena within the hybridization, you could say, lineage as the greys that are partially our ancestors together with yourselves had lost entirely the ability to create what you call melatonin, mm -hmm. the coloration of the skin. It was not necessary because they lived underground for many generations and so there was no protection needed in that sense from the sunlight as you understand it in your world your skins have adapted to different levels of sun intensity and so forth that was no longer a relevant aspect of their existence in that way it was also you could say genetically manipulated out of the species the lighter skin made them more receptible to what you might understand to be a type of light baths that they took mm -hmm. for energizing themselves the light skin could absorb that specific light more easily but so the melatonin didn't come back until the hybridization program caught up or evolved into 
the chapter that you now understand to be our own species or the Yahyel. But Shahyel, for instance, are all very pale. Sasadi are all very pale, you would say. We are starting to get some color in the cheeks. <laughs> we are starting to develop a little bit more of the rainbow, you could say, appearances that you are familiar with on your own planet today. When it comes to the number of fingers and toes, <laughs> this may differ though. We do sometimes have families with four feet, sorry, correction, with four toes, or sometimes even still three. It depends on how, you could say, genetics have caught on down the line throughout, throughout the hybridization program. This is a bit about me, a bit about our heritage, about our origins, and a bit out about fellow Yahyel and when it comes to their appearances. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it's super All right. fascinating. Oh, well, thank you. The, uh, just for the listeners, the one meter 75 equates to five feet, seven and a half inches. So somewhere between five, seven, five, eight in other cultures. Uh, you mentioned light, very, very, very interesting and really intriguing. I'd like to know more about that. And does that also mean that you speak light language? Well, when I just mentioned light, it was in correlation to how the greys had managed their lives, had shaped it, designed it underground, you see. They used light baths to some degree to energize their bodies, and therefore the skin had to be light in order to be able to absorb that light effortlessly. Besides that, they lived on well, what you might perhaps describe as a type of milkshake with lots of protein. <laughs> we live very naturally in another way of light. That is because also we live above ground and we have a world very similar to yours with lots of nature, very lush, similar to yours if you wouldn't have cultivated it to the degree that you have, that is. We are most of us what you now term to be breatharians mm -hmm. we can just you could say tune in uh, with the energy that is all around us and understand how to absorb that effortlessly by intention this comes very naturally to us we can also choose to if we wish eat a tiny bit now and then just for the taste or the excitement for the adventure of experiencing a specific flavor in one way or another. So there can be, it is a choice. We have the choice, the possibility to eat if we choose to. We do consume water. There is the drinking of the crystal clear water from nature. There is energizing of water. And by that, we mean that water is used as an element that can be charged in a certain way. You can do this too, and some on your planet do. And it will be on the higher dimensional, you could say, the higher wavelength versions of a future Earth, a very common thing to use water for all kinds of purposes and to charge it, to, in a sense, program it with specific information for specific purposes. We use that in that way as well. Are you in a romantic relationship or do you have a family that you can share with us? At this moment, I am in a romantic relationship, as you would call it. She, if you would ask for a name, uh, wishes to introduce herself by the name of Magnolia. Mm. She works very actively in the training, you could say, getting them to be familiar with your species and Earth of the hybrid children. One of her greatest passions, and since we are all following our heart, our hardest excitement, as Yahyel in our civilization, 
This is what we do. We follow our heart to the best of our ability without pushing or pulling and without insisting where it ought to go in any given moment. And this is what she has chosen to do at this point in time. And what is your job specifically, Arjun? What is it that you do and facilitate for the Yachiel? I am, as perhaps you may have understood before, but we'll repeat it, a first contact specialist. It is my highest excitement to explore a new world, to get to know other civilizations more deeply and more profoundly. And one way to do that is for us to cross-connect energetically with other incarnations on such planets. And now this is where time and space can become a little bit confusing, perhaps for some of you listening in. But since everything exists right here, right now, and the here and now really is all there is, that is why we can understand ourselves to be from your perspective as from the future and simultaneously cross-connect with what from our perspective seems to be the past and in that way have a right here and now direct communication with, you could say, the channel before you and through her translate our ideas to you. We do not speak English. It is that this specific individual translating and interpreting my thoughts for you right now, speaks Dutch as she was brought up speaking that language and additionally learned how to speak English in her human life. So she can choose, she feels comfortable enough with these two languages to translate our ideas and concepts in these two languages, and so she does. Yeah, thank, thankfully. <laughs> thankfully, we've got it in our language as well. Um, thank you, and thanks for sharing all that, and hello to Magnolia. What a beautiful name. That's, that's beautiful. Thank you, and hello to you. Hmm. You know, it's interesting because for you as a contact specialist and your greatest joy, Arjun, it includes being visible, right? I'm not seeing you, but I mean, I'm connecting with you. You allow yourself to be seen and known by masses, frankly, and whomever is called to something like this. And I want to hearken back to something that Vidika and I discussed at the very end of our last time together a couple of months ago, the three of us, when she was talking a little bit about shyness. I think this is a really important point in conversation because for so many of us, who are light workers here at a very auspicious time on the planet Earth. We have this desire to be in front of people. We have this calling to be in front of people. It's part of our mission. And yet concurrently, there is this timidity, there's this shyness. And so it comes out, it's a little strange. I need to be visible, but I have reticence, right? So there's not total alignment with being confidently visible to the audiences, to the world at large. Can you talk about how that peace that creates the reticence might be reframed or healed so that we can feel fully free and confident to be seen and heard by the world, but also to have the voice we really came here to have? Oh, thank you so much for this wonderful question. Mm. Let us shine a light on two aspects of this question. First of all, you said that I personally am choosing to be very visible in this way. And it could be said that yes, to some degree I am, but also humanity is being given the opportunity to choose to harmonize their own, you could say individual and collective vibration, more so to ours, if they wish, to use it as a permission slip or a stepping stone to remember their own highest potential, you see. And so we come as a mirror. And the reason, one of the many reasons that we 
come through certain individuals of your collective in this way that you call channeling allows every single observer that comes into contact with this information in this particular route, through this particular route of delivery, to make up their own mind. We are not of the intention to be invasive. As an ET species, we understand as an extra dimensional species that you are, in a sense, just beginning to tiptoe into the broader realms of understanding of your own greater self, the cosmic energy bandwidth that you all innately contain. You are just beginning, for most of you at least, to remember that all of that is also you. And we come in as reflectors of that particular idea and by allowing our energy vibration and information to come through one of your own. It is a very smooth, gentle way to introduce certain concepts to your population. And it allows for all of you to make up your own mind whether you choose to believe that this is really coming from me and my people or whether the person before you that you call a channeler is just making it all up. You have the free choice to use your own discernment and in your own uh, journey of spiritual awakening, you get to, you could say, train uh, your radar to see what pops up as in alignment with you and not so much in alignment with you. And for some, this may resonate, and for some, this may not. You all have your own route of exploration. Eventually, through the route of least resistance, you will all attract effortlessly into your own version of reality the information that is most relevant for you in every single here and now. Now, you do have many people who have come in to incarnation in this particular time and space of your time space reality dream construct to be what you might label light workers or activators or facilitators in all kinds of ways true most of these people feel an innate calling to use their real voice their hearts inner knowing their connection to source and to share that with the world in their own way and yes many of these individuals walk up and against the challenge of how they have been trained or have chosen to be trained throughout their own upbringing and by comparing themselves with other people to not speak up that loudly, to not be too different from all of the rest and so forth, to fit in with the crowd, to not stand out and so forth. But to stand out, to come with a new piece of information, with a different angle of perception, is exactly what the greater collective, in fact, has ordered. It is exactly what is being asked for. You have been on a route of exploration, generally speaking, that holds a lot of room, a lot of room for growth for spiritual expansion. For that expansion to take place, you could say, the old jacket needs to be taken off. And so it may feel to those that understand themselves to be light workers or messengers, cutting edge messengers for the new paradigm that they sense, that they know is possible for all of you that lies as a potential within your hearts, within your species. It may feel to them as if that old jacket is bursting at the seams. They may feel very caught, very. We're looking for the translation. Almost suffocated by that old paradigm, mainstream type of thinking that is still so present in many layers of your current setup of society. 
this push, so to speak, this pressure is being experienced by them as very uncomfortable. And the beauty of that, the function of that is to, in a sense, trigger them out of their comfort zone to help them realize that the moment they choose to open up, the moment they allow their own true voice, their own truth to flow through them effortlessly, there will be an immediate sense of relief. The idea of shyness mostly comes from the idea of comparing yourself to other people, people who have already done a certain thing and perhaps it didn't work out exactly as the rational mind would like to see it work out. It is a result of imagining worst case scenarios, how things may turn out to be. But it also comes from lack beliefs. It is not open. The concept of, you could say, being fearful to speak in that way comes from the lack belief that perhaps what you have to say isn't worth being heard by those who get to hear it. The idea though is that within the divine all that is, within the all that is of creation, no mistakes are being made. When you walk on the street and quote unquote accidentally pick up on a conversation that is playing out between two people that walk by you on the street, the one or two words that you can perhaps make out of that mumbling, if you pay attention to them, to them may actually fit in with a specific theme that you're just working on right now in your own life and may even help you, help direct you to a possible solution. If you choose to look at your life the way you experience your version of reality as a type of lucid dream, if you look at everything that you encounter within your day in that way through those filters, you may find your world to be already very magical. You may find that you are being communicated with from uh, many layers of dimensions. We are not the only ones chipping in with the guidance now and then. First and above all, it is your higher self connection that guides you, that shines through you like a light dust through a movie projector. You are, with your rational mind, just observing the movie. But the higher self, your soul connection, is the light itself that has chosen to, chosen to have that movie run in front of the light so that the movie would be projected on the white screen for the ego mind, the rational mind, to be observed and to, to some degree, buy into. You could say that shyness is the result of buying into the movie just a little bit more than you would say perhaps serves you. Now you know this on a higher self point of view and you guide yourself through the emotional guiding mechanism. This is why shyness, though often used as some type of an excuse, really only just reveals to those that choose to use that word or that concept, it reveals there is some type of lack belief at the bottom of their belief systems that perhaps they haven't fully chosen to look at just yet. You have room for expansion if you feel shy. There are some wonderful gifts hiding for you in the shadows. It just reveals to you. You could say the capability that you must carry within yourself to take off, like we said before, that very cramped, very outgrown jacket so that you can make room for a new one that suits you much better. Whenever you say anything, whenever you allow your voice to shine through or your message could be in writing, could be through a blog, could be in many, many ways through a song, through music. Words are in that sense, not the root of least resistance for everyone. So when you find the way 
through which you would like to shine your light most brightly, you will find that. Even though, yes, some people may be triggered by that. When you do choose to allow yourself to go with the flow in that way and follow your heart in that way, even those that may be triggered by what you have to bring as your unique gift, mm -hmm. eventually longer down the road, further down the road, will be able to use that information in their own spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. Remember that you can only get triggered about one thing or the other if there is still room for expansion. So there are no accidents. And this would be perhaps one of the strongest arguments, perhaps, that we may offer to those that feel shy, the more they can make peace with the greater perspective of one or two people perhaps not agreeing with what they have to say or perhaps not fully aligning with the vibration that you're offering in that moment, the more you can look at that from a higher perspective, a higher point of view and understand that these individuals are being given a gift that they just have not yet chosen to unwrap. They may choose to do that later or they may never choose to do that in this incarnation, but that's not up to you. The only thing that's up to you is to allow yourself with full integrity to be as much in full alignment with your own higher self in every single here and now moment, mm. following your highest excitement that what inspires you act upon it to the best of your ability without pushing or pulling respecting also other people's preferences in that way if somebody doesn't want to listen to you allow them to walk away or do something else you do not have to convince anybody else of your light if you feel you need to convince others of what you have to say that only reveals you must then be doubtful of what you have to say yourself because why would you need a confirmation from the quote-unquote outside if you truly believed in what you are sharing. So here again, without pushing or pulling, share what you have to say in a joyous way, keep it open, be without insistence, do not insist on where it needs to lead to, what you feel the response has to be from other people. If you come from that high vibrational wave, from joy with non-insistence, you will get back, reflected back to you, from your environment, mostly positive reflections, usually. You may, in fact, still invite some, you could say, averse responses, but usually when that happens, it is just to double check on yourself. You have invited these sour notes, you could say, in the game to test with yourself how much more harmonious you yeah. have gotten within yourself. Mm -hmm. And when that is smoothed out, once you have accepted that within yourself to such a deep degree, understanding that there is only divine timing, mm -hmm. that nothing comes out by accident and that anybody can use anything to grow from if they choose to, then there will no longer be any excuse for shyness and you will thrive and feel surrounded with positive reflections and a, ongoing stream of synchronicity as the result of you allowing your light to shine that brightly hmm. ah, that was a beautifully fleshed out answer thank you and i keep thank hearing you. in your answer it's really for all of us a spiritual journey when we're yes. called to be a voice yes or whatever it is like you said singing dancing art speaking influence yes. etc podcasts still that yes, it is a spiritual journey in the sense we're oh, really not up against anybody else. There is no comparison. It's just us with us, us with the divine and exactly. to enact the mission we came here to do. And when there's a bump in the road of shyness or um, something that aberrant that comes up, it's really ours to take on to yes. get through to the other side to do what we came here to do. See what that yes. lack is. Yes. Beautiful. Wow. I hope that inspired a lot of people and there'll be a lot more voices out there after this. And I'm going to shift into talking about climate change. All right. Right now, I mean, I know where I am in Los Angeles, massive heat wave, insane. Maybe at one time we might have might have hit 100 degrees for a day. 
we're going into our second week of being in the 100 degrees. There is drought taking place in the planet, massive drought. There is storms. There's recently been extreme heat in China that threatened their major water source and their hydropower abilities. The number of, I know this is like depressing, but I just want to point out globally what's happening. Uh, Brazil, the Amazon fires hit an all time high in five years last month. Zimbabwe had to move 2,500 wild animals because of climate change. And it just feels like in this sector, there's a lot of bad news. So it's there's no denying that for many people, it's anxiety provoking. Is, can you just, before I get to even a, a really direct question, but talk about that, where are we headed with that? We've, we've touched on this before, and I know you've said, you know, how we feel it gets reflected back to us on the planet and so forth. But this is, it's a pretty big subject, and we're living through these changes. Can you just talk about the planet changes right now? All right. Thank you so much. So first of all, in watching the news, as you call it, yeah. and piling all of these little facts on top of each other and focusing upon all of them so profoundly you just used the word yourself anxiety provoking this is an approach that for most of you your rational minds do not know how to respond to it triggers a sensation of helplessness and like you said anxiety and stress it's because of the way this is being delivered and with a magnifying glass focusing in, zooming in on so many incidents and then just throwing it at people in that way doesn't necessarily assist in inviting the energy vibration that is the ultimate answer to these type of reflections. And yes, they are reflections. You are in a transition. You are in a transformative phase and your entire planet, Gaia herself, her soul, her energy, and the reflections in the physical reality, the way she crystallizes for you to observe, is speaking with you in a very direct manner. And by that we mean you are being offered reflections that may come very close or seem to be very much in your face, so to speak. So you're in a transitional phase, you're showing yourself that, you're kind of showing yourself that things are heating up. And you're looking at a combination of a natural cycle, but the natural cycle usually takes quite a bit longer than what you see unfolding right now. It has been sped up through a combination of how you've been choosing to physically, well, interact with the planet and your belief systems. So when a specific species is ready for a type of quantum leap, as you are, when it carries within itself a potential for great transformative spiritual growth, it will give itself reasons to go outside of their comfort zone. And you've been giving yourself such reasons more bluntly, starting about two and a half years ago. So you could say that with the piling up of seeming world-changing subjects, such as the climate, you are giving yourselves open invitations to move out of your comfort zone and begin to think in a greater way. This is a global subject that you're being offered to ponder it also invites you to unite and to stand together and to make decisions that obviously serve the planet more positively. The idea is for every single individual in their own way, since you all have your individual and absolutely unique perspective on what you're being offered through the information that comes through your social media and what you observe in your own reality your own version of reality, your own country, or what have you. You're individually being asked 
to tune in more deeply with your own higher self, with your deeper knowing, with your heart, and to see if you can maintain inner balance and become more consciously aware of the greater topics, quote unquote, the global topics in your inner world. What are the things that you have or have not been looking at? What are the things that are heating up in your own private world? What are the things that you have possibly been ignoring or that you haven't treated you know, with too much kindness? And we're talking about the dialogue between you and you, your inner self and the rational mind. It's really the journey that you're being invited to go upon more profoundly has to do with that. And for every single individual, the way you choose to respond to these things will determine the version of Earth that you shift to next. We have explained this before, but we will again for people who are just tuning in with this source of information through this particular conversation in this here and now, you do not live on just one planet. You are every single individual for yourself living on your own version of Earth with your own version of the collective that comes with that, that you choose to observe and invite into your version of reality, your version of perception of what reality is as you are choosing to be focused in this physical dream uh, construct which does not mean when we say dream that all of this is quote unquote fake. The experiences are real, even though the construct of the quote unquote reality ultimately is a dream, is what you might even call a hologram. The experiences are real. The lessons that are being learned uh, by your soul, having chosen to be focused in this way in a physical dream reality are real. You do have, you could say, an impact in your version of reality by the energy vibration that you choose to emanate with every single decision you take, with every thought you choose to entertain, with the words you speak, the actions you act upon, and so forth. You are in this life all connected through an energy field. You shift organically to versions of Earth and collectives of humans that help you face that what needs to be faced within you, that help you grow beyond the fears that you may have still been entertaining up until now. And all that is really happening right now is that the massive, at least so it may be interpreted by many of you, the massive and strong voice of your earth itself, of Gaia herself, has now jumped in and on to this conversation. This is a wake-up call. This is a reminder for everybody willing to dive deep within to uh, remember why they came in this particular here and now moment, why they incarnated in this version of reality. Because it comes with very specific challenges, with very specific invitations, and with more potential than ever before. You could say that in that sense, by having your boundaries pushed to some degree through the reflections of what you understand to be your own planet, your mother earth, you are all even more deeply invited to connect with one another and with your own higher self and to respond uh, to that from uh, a balanced energy vibration and then ground that knowingness into action. Come from inner balance, not from a need to control or gain uh, great profits at the expense of other humans of or, or your climate, your nature, your natural environment, to remember within yourselves that you are all connected, even to those in your observation of your version of reality that do seem to be behaving in that way, that do seem to perhaps use 
certain symbols for their own um, agendas. You are uh, being invited to remember your interconnectedness and then through the heart, by sinking into your heart's knowingness, the seat of the soul, allow yourself through that energy vibration to respond to what you feel is playing out. And if the world stage seems overwhelming, then listen uh, to your inner knowing that through the emotion of discomfort, actually in that way is calling you home and it may even benefit you to turn off the news for a while and focus more so on your inner balance or look actively for positive news because never before there have been so many projects on your planet with huge potential to assist mm. through these type of challenges. There are more inventions now than ever mm. on your planet to create drinking water, literally, in some cases, from the air. Mm. By catching, you could say, dew drops from the higher regions in the air with nets. Or in the morning, you may have seen this before. There is that, there is so many playful techniques. There are entire regions in India that are playing games, collecting water in different ways that have even kick-started almost dried up rivers to begin flowing again. Wow. There is a lot of information that is not being shared Correct. with your mainstream media. Do remember, if you will, when you see these darkest ends of the spectrum, mm -hmm. that you live in a world where you have chosen to play with polarity. And remember, if you will, the yin-yang symbol. There is equally as much as the color black, as the color white, in that, you could say, symbol with the little dash of white and the little dot of black on opposite sides. So that you remember there is always a little tiny doorway for you to move from what seems to be the ultimate black through the little dot of white into the bigger white, if you will. You can look at it like a little, you could say, doorway that leads to the back, to the other side of that circle, of that symbol. In the same way in your reality, if there is a problem, you could say, on one end of the stick, the solution is already there on the other end. If there is black on one side of the yin yang symbol, then there is the white on the other side. There are no one ended sticks or one sided coins. There are answers to every single challenge that you are facing right now. You are also challenged, though, to look with new eyes and with more inner knowing and with higher discernment to how certain messages are being brought to you. Yes, you are being invited to stand united. Yes, it is a wake up call, but there is no need for despair because that would be the exact energy frequency to help you, in a sense, go down that spiral even deeper and see less solutions instead of more. Mm. Find in yourself balance, calm, and ease. Allow yourself, no matter the circumstances that are being presented to you, playing out on the world stage, allow yourself to uh, nourish your contact with your own higher self, your inner knowing, your hearts, with your connection to source, and allow yourself to celebrate that connection, however you feel capable of doing so. And you will find that you shift more effortlessly to the versions of Earth where solutions begin to pour in from all different directions, while you, where you can begin to observe your race as an infinite, stream of geniuses uh, coming up oof. with answers to all of these seeming conundrums, seeming 
dead ends. There only are limitations by the grace of your acceptance of them, your embracing of them. There is no body that can in that way dictate what your reality looks like. You choose, you have a choice and the more disastrous or challenging certain bits and pieces of information that are being presented to you, the more you are all individually and as a collective invited to dig deeper within and find the gold that we know is there. Mm. There's this uh, quote from S.C. Lowry, which is just for the record, darling, not all positive change feels positive in the beginning. <laughs> That's the cramped jacket. The jacket that feels too tight, that seems to be bursting at the seams, is the reminder that you're ready for a new one and a new one has already been custom tailored. It's right there hanging there, right there for you. It's finished, it's done, it's perfect. It's perfect for you. You hardly feel that you're wearing it. It's just so divine. The only reason why you may not feel ready for that is because you are clinging to the old. And so the old, by pushing, you could say, you seemingly in a corner is the beginning of actual positive change. When you can catch yourself, in that moment, realizing this must mean there is room for growth. All this discomfort that I'm feeling right now, that I'm observing right now in my version of reality, must mean I have outgrown this jacket. If you understand that that is the beginning of your positive change, yes, it may come with discomfort. But if you can catch yourself already right there and begin to define it as a positive change, you will be out of that old jacket and into the new in no time. You will have allowed yourself to let go of the old. Does that help? That was meme worthy, meaning Arjun quotes everything from an infinite stream of geniuses with answers and solutions to outgrowing your old jacket is just the beginning of positive change. There was enormous wisdom and reframing in that. Oh, thank you. I'd like to shift to something that's very prevalent in the U.S. Recently, we had a U.S. Supreme Court overturn Roe versus Wade. And we then saw a number of United States move to limit or ban abortion. And I know there are many, many people very upset about this. It seems to be, this is my personal opinion, <laughs> there seems to be a level of insanity that a government can actually rule over a woman's body and choices. And especially if you add in things like rape and other violence that gets perpetrated and then to say to a woman, well, you must have this child. That's your, your responsibility in this life. So let's, let's go to the underbelly or the metaphysical level why was Roe versus Wade overturned? What does this mean for us? What are we actually looking at that's not the drama and the crisis we think it is? Well, you're already, in a sense, bringing it up yourself, the metaph metaphysical underbelly. Mm -hmm. In a sense, also just looking at the idea of giving birth and coming with a new age, coming with new ideas and in a sense feeling a need to direct that in one way or another is the old paradigm versus the new paradigm yeah. now there's a lot to be said about obviously the incidents as you're coming up with the specific examples the where violence was used and so forth. And you are as a species on a journey to get to a point where the idea of conception will be a conscious spiritual experience. Mm -hmm. You're on your way if you look 
at the shifting, you could say, to versions of parallel Earth in the multiverse that you are focused in, in this idea of the physical dream reality, there are versions of Earth where humanity has evolved onto a species that understands when conception takes place, can invite it, and in a sense, we don't want to say control because that's really not what it is, but in a sense, nudge or direct or allow, that's the best word, to allow it in a way that feels consciously graspable for those that are part of that magic, that are they are in step with the miracle of conception in that way. So there is the conscious understanding how conception can take place and when and why and so forth. There is open communication with the spirit that is connected with that being. And there is an understanding also spiritually if that being decides that just a few weeks of pregnancy, for instance, is enough. Understand that when there is spontaneous abortions, that there's something happening there as well, as well as with... We're looking for the translation here. Abortions that were, well, artificially induced, so to speak. There is no accident in birth or death. There is, however, a level of understanding spiritually what is flow and what is upstream. And you're in the act of balancing these perspectives out and that's why right now it seems very radical revisions of certain laws are also being brought to the table. Again, in a sense, to have certain groups of people really be invited to go and again beyond their comfort zone to discuss subjects that weren't a discussion before. And even to discuss them yet again in this case, as you may have seen happen on different topics on your planet as well. Such as, for instance, a huge movement on your planet today, or relatively big, compared to, say, 50 years ago, is of the state of mind of your planet being flat. Just to give you another example of something that is, again, being discussed. A very different angle, but again... Some people may think, where does this come from? Why is this occurring right now? It does look like a bit of a jumble, as if everything that seemed to have crystallized in a certain way now suddenly is up and for grabs, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The reason for that is really because, in a sense, you have this jar with all of this, you could say, ingredients in there, and you are shaking it. You are all shaking it up because if you wish to invite an entire collective to make a type of quantum leap, everything that contains a level, even the tiniest bit of controversy or stress or tension surrounding that topic wishes to be reviewed. Even the tiniest bit of controversy can trigger an entire country to revisit certain laws that you all thought had been crystallized out. And it brings to the table a lot of different symbols and subjects that may help you individually and collectively to move through certain topics that wish to be seen more deeply. A balance is what's being asked for. And certain decisions just didn't come from an inner balance. And there are no laws that in that sense, the black and white thinking of the law and to just demand everybody in this state act so and everybody in that state act so, that onto itself also is on the table. You get to discuss that too. So it's all open invitations, it's all trigger points and they hurt because they haven't been sorted out just yet. Got it. Yeah, so that, I mean, that goes down to the micro and the macro, if that yes. is so. It means that people who are having relationship disturbances, it means it's time to revisit it, that there's there's an underbelly there that has 
not been worked out yet and needs to be looked at and both parties or however many parties are involved, we need to renegotiate and find something that is healthy and loving and works for all. Same thing for companies or businesses that are not doing well, uh, cities, et cetera. You know, I, it sounds like everything is a time to yes. revisit, right? Yes. And there's a lot of revisiting going on right now as well. Including education and how you choose to raise your children. And then there is a lot of women who choose abortion because they don't believe they are capable to raise, raise a child, for instance. It takes a village yeah. to raise a child. Yeah. Is there a way in your society where that could be, in a sense, supported as well? Can these discussions be reopened? Are there ways to get to know yourself better? And for the specific women's, women that are touched by this, it's a very deep spiritual journey. Mm. And yeah, to... You could say for them, usually, for most of them, not consciously, but on a, on a higher spiritual level, from a soul level, they have chosen, they understand, their higher self understands. They're focused, perhaps in a state where these kind of things are going on, and it will push them perhaps out of their comfort zone, whether that means going to another state and doing what they were intending to do, or staying where they're at and looking at all the circumstances and puzzle pieces in a new way. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of invitations. We can't give you a black and white answer to this, because really what this is triggering is so individual. We can say, however, that the same goes for this generally speaking, as it does with what we said about climate change, when you zoom in on challenges left and right around you and you begin to feel hopeless for humanity, you're not helping. And you're actually putting yourself in a victim role as well, or you wouldn't feel hopeless. If you feel powerless, you for you're forgetting in that moment your unique connection with source. And that's actually the perfect moment to take a step back, turn within, find your inner balance, and then see how you can come from inspiration and joy and love and inner knowing in your response to these circumstances. Remember, if you will, we've said it before, circumstances do not matter, state of being matters. And by matters, we quite literally mean, as in a pun, decide what will materialize for you, what will crystallize for you in your perception of reality. State of being matters, state of being your energy vibration, your Einstein said it very beautifully with E is MC to the second. Squared. We squared, exactly. Thank you. That was a European translation for people who were wondering what that meant. This is a world wherein the energy vibration determines what will crystallize for you in quantum physics the double slit experiments has also been one of the many reflections that pointed that out to you it's just that you're not being raised with that level of information and understanding but since you are ready to have your physics or mostly so your quantum physics and your spiritual understandings merge and work hand in hand very powerfully this is the quantum leap this reveals the quantum leap that lies within all of you as a species it is why you are confronting yourself with these pushing yourselves out of your comfort zones kind of situations because you have within you that potential to suddenly see it all and have it click in and understand that only from a balanced state of being you can actually shift the version of earth that you're on and like we said before allowing that avalanche of love and solutions yeah and everything you're saying is also true for gender right now i mean we're yes. living where all of those paradigms are being broken down in mass and as well yes. as sexuality, which I yes. find really cool. <laughs> I'm really fascinated by and enjoying somewhat, you know, I don't like anyone to be in pain, but I am enjoying watching the crumbling of all these old archetypes and th this new freedom coming about this revisiting of sexuality and gender that's on the table too and Absolutely. it comes with the transformational age in a sense of language even where you get to discuss 
what the weight, what weight is being given to certain words Mm -hmm. and whether that works for you or not. Certain definitions that have been changed over the years and some groups of people having one definition, other people having another definition. Can you find each other on an energetic middle point? Mm -hmm. All of these things, how does it feel to believe such, believe so, and all of these perspectives are now up on the table to be reviewed by all involved. Yeah. And the idea is not for all of you to end up in a place where you're constantly walking on eggshells, quite the opposite. It invites you to an age where you know you are free to be who you wish to be. And however you choose to label that or verbalize that is okay. Yeah. This is where you are evolving into on the higher dimensional, you could say wavelength versions of earth, future earths that are available to you. If you choose to shift, allow yourself to shift to those, that is, with your focus point of beingness in this incarnation as yeah. you're choosing to explore it as a human being. But everything is possible. All roots of exploration are possible. And there are versions of earth where just where these kind of things become more rigid. And that will be a clue then that you're losing the inner balance and that you're no longer creating from there, but more from the head, not so much from the heart, but more from the head. So the invitation is to find the middle way. And the paradox is, is that once you let go of your rigidity and insistency regarding certain ideas in language, and this will take a little bit longer, approximately, we're looking at, depending on how much you allow yourselves to spiritually evolve as a collective and individually, Mm. several decades to several hundreds of years, but eventually there is within the potential, the gradual shift away from language to telepathy, telepathy based on empathy through the Mm. heart's connection, where language will simply fall by the way side because you understand there really is no way to capture yourselves in words anyway. So you could just be your own being and understand each other by tuning in with each other's energy field. And then that will be end of that discussion. Mm. Yum. That sounds great. Yes. All right. Uh, Finances. Finances right now mostly planetary, very unstable. Petrodollar, cryptocurrencies, almighty dollar, most countries not holding up. So there's a, maybe you would call it a a revisiting of a financial revolution. And then there is a country like China and they are in a position that they can actually assist other countries with rising debt. And they are starting to do that. They're already doing that. So is it beneficial? for a country like China to start to leverage this, uh, start to help out? Will they will they leverage it in a beneficial way that's globally positive financially, or will this be used against other countries? How do you see that faring? This transitional phase regarding your finances, we you said unstable we call it exciting it is also an invitation to break open the old paradigm and look at things from a new perspective what you are most of all invited to explore for those and we're saying this very underlined that are excited to explore this. So from a high energy vibration, not from a low one or panic or frenzy, what you're mostly invited to share or explore in this way is to see if you can find um, different systems of distribution in general, where it isn't so much depending on one country, one government, one system that has its own gain agenda certain bank structures that are together with shareholders and what have you 
These systems are not entirely transparent to most, if not almost all, users of money in your world. And those roots are invited to come to the surface level. And you could say by having that entire market become very wobbly and people from all kinds of energy states of being looking for solutions can create a type of, you could say, we're looking for the translation. We're giving images right now very rapidly. Think of a typo, a financial earthquake, hmm. where with the shaking and the breaking of the top layers, now the core comes up and lays bare and open. People can choose to look at the depths of the structure and how it truly has been set up. You are, in a sense, also when it comes to these ideas, invited to turn the inside out and reconsider. Find a way to have fundamental needs for everybody met the, if you wish, for the lack of a better translation, um, idea of a kind of basic income, be not controlled by one government or system that makes this type of fundamental income depending on behavior, religion, personal choices regarding health and so forth. But to have that be a guarantee in your world could end poverty like that. And this is possible for you. You have the means, you have the networks. It just takes a different way of looking, a different type of organizing where humanity as a whole gets to choose more freely, becomes an active participant in the flows and the streams of your finances in many, many ways. But the idea of taxes, as you know them today, will eventually fall away entirely, where the form that it will take instead is based on each and every single person's heart's connection to that what is playing out in the world as they individually observe it. All of you, your heart strings are intrinsically connected. If all of you were given a certain amount of money simultaneously and you were asked to choose from your heart to give half of that to a good cause, be it nature, an endangered animal species, the backyard of your neighbors, the kitchen for the neighbors across the street, children that need education, you name it. If every human being was given an amount of money to donate to a good cause of their own choosing, then you would find so many problems solved in one day that no government, even with the best of intentions, could ever organize for you because the amount of pressure on the shoulders of those few people that are oriented in those governments can never from their own hearts oversee the amount of detail that you can when you allow these currencies to freely flow through humanity from hand to hand, from heart to heart. Texas will no longer be needed because your heart's energy collective fields can direct your riches in a way that you have never seen before. So much equality can come from this. So much restoration of your planet. So much assistance with so much attention to what is truly needed. You all have it within you. You are innately programmed to assist one another. You are bound by unconditional love naturally. It is only because you're raised to believe it is a survival of the fittest type of world that there is lack, that you need to fight 
for your spot, your place, earn your worth. Mm -hmm. That is why some people feel so poorly, feel so deprived of the biggest richness there is, which is the understanding of your ongoing connection with source, that they feel they need to compensate by gathering as much money as they can possibly imagine and hold on to it, not have it move or perhaps invest it in people with like-minded energy vibrations that are eventually mostly after gain and profit and power and the illusion of control because an illusion is what that is. Mm. So when you relax, when you, in your own private life, allow yourself to tap into your riches, the riches of the knowingness of your ongoing connection with source and share from a place of abundance. If you can find that in yourself, joyously honoring your own set of beliefs in any given here and now. But as soon as you feel abundant enough to share, allow yourself to do so and see what comes back to you as a result of doing that, of acting on that impulse, that can mean for the people who choose to live in that way, to design their lives, to evolve in that direction, a swift and effortless and smooth shift to versions of earth where a new system for finances will find foot on the ground, will find footing, will be installed perhaps in phases, but eventually accessible for all. We had a phase here in the United States, I assume also in other countries, I don't know the specifics, but the phase here during COVID was government assistance. So they called it SBA loans, PPP loans. Most of the PPP, I believe, were forgiven, uh, but not so much <laughs> SBA loans. But I, I was thinking about your amazing, powerful example that if when the government loaned us money during that time to keep us afloat, if there had been, you know, an idea, I don't want to say an edict or a rule, but there had been the loving suggestion, we're giving you this, and we would like to ask you to donate 50% of that to some passion you believe in that is very important that will either help humanity, the planet, the environment, the earth, etc., the animals, the sky, the water. Wow, what possibilities would have occurred if we the were thing assisted, yes. We understand, we understand. And that is, or it seems perhaps on the surface layer, a very pretty picture, yeah. or at least a step forward. Yet, the thing is mm -hmm. that you all individually signed up for reaching that spiritual state of knowingness where you feel from your own hearts inspired to do that. Mm -hmm. You do not need a government to ask you. You do not need an outside, you could say, authority, quote unquote, to inspire you in that way. Now, it may be, there may be a middle way. There may be a stepping stone where you evolve into that direction where you find it in yourself that goes through the idea of, you could say, a government. But it will eventually move to individual knowingness yeah. and then collective knowingness and so it is with the individuals that already design their lives that way they are the way makers you may have heard of the hundredth monkey effect yes automatically the more people allow themselves to give freely from what they understand to be their version of abundance which is entirely individual and can take many 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 shapes if you have two dollars, you give away one, that that's great abundance for that person. He or she is coming from great sense of abundance in doing so. Great trust in source providing for them. Yeah. 
great love for the one that they're giving their other dollar to and so forth. Just an extreme example, so to speak. But an example, nonetheless, that comes from somebody who has chosen from joy and in a pure heart in that moment to do so, that energy vibration spreads in the heart's collective. Now, this may play out in changes on governmental layers and social layers and economic layers in many, many ways. And what you're seeing right now is the beginning of that earthquake, the financial okay. earthquake. Okay. You're beginning to rip open the service layer. You're beginning to allow people to see what's underground, in a sense. You're beginning to invite them to think out of their comfort zone, which existed out of, I walk to the bank with this pass, with this little bit of plastic, and then I do this, and then I get that. There was no further consideration involved very often. So now you're being asked to think a little deeper when it becomes very wobbly. Okay, how is this structure built? And again, the digging deeper and the looking at that and the examining of that, see if possible, if you feel inspired at all to do so, to come from a high vibrational state when you do choose to dive into all of that. Because it is from a high vibrational state that the most profound and beneficial changes can be made. When solutions are being brought to the table that come from fear and panic we need to all do it like this or it won't yeah. work then you're just in a sense excluding the billions of solutions that humanity is walking around with other solutions that people are walking around with and saying no this is the only way but you will most likely discover that people who force the one solution usually gain something by sticking with that one solution. Yes. And the ones that gain from that are only but a few. So you're invited all together to bundle your geniusness <laughs> and your heart's connection and to let it flow freely through you as a channel, the channels that you all are in your own unique way channel through you your own highest vibrational state of being in any given moment to the best of your ability without forcing yourself to have to be happy every day. That's not what we're talking about. Right. We're not talking about suppressing emotions that may come up as a result of certain things shifting in your world. We're not talking about not feeling what you're feeling. We're talking about staying present with what is. We're talking about staying with you, choosing to dive within, especially when it gets tough. Your highest vibrational state of being, when you feel very insecure about what's happening, is to be present with your own insecurity, mm -hmm. to be there as a loving mother with that emotional storm perhaps happening in your belly. Be present with it. Keep on breathing and allow yourself the time and space to discover gently but slowly but surely what particular set of beliefs is causing that storm to look so overwhelming for you and then see if you can redefine redefine the beliefs dismantle the bombs or the mines that are just under the ground for you in your world in mm -hmm. your private world and then when you gift that to yourself you become a greater gift for others the stability in you will radiate outwardly others will feel inspired to be as you are or act as you do in their own way in their own unique form and you can you could say cheer them for doing that and see for them that they have something to offer to the table that nobody else can and through the human race allowing themselves to rediscover their greater selves in this way individually and collectively New systems of organizations will be born from that. And there will be no need to abort those. Hmm. You understand what we mean by that? Yes, I do. Powerful. You will, you will feel in the flow with that. You will understand that it will be like a homecoming, not from an obligation, but like a true homecoming. Oh, these are the individuals in my society that I feel comfortable having as 
a structure of, you could say, organization, and it will be much more fluid, much less rigid, no certain time frames as this particular person needs to be up there for four years, and then there will be this and this particular ritual to make it somebody else. No, it will be in the flow, all the hearts, the hearts connected will decide, you could say in the utmost level of a type of democracy, if you even still would choose to use that word, to feel the alignment or misalignment of a certain person in a certain position. And for these people to be willing to be self-discerning and self-investigating and to realize also energetically, hmm, maybe my time here is no longer functional now, who synchronistically will come up and take this spot. There is a flow possible on your planet for your species to live in that level wow. of positive synchronicity. Oh, Mind-blowing conversation right now. This is really being received. Oh, thank you. Uh, before I get to the last question, I just want to say this because I think it's important when you were talking about the ways we can contribute. And I actually know so many people are watching and listening. I know their hearts. I know they probably already do in their way. I just want to give an example so people can start to think along these lines. One of the things I do, I'm a big believer. For me, it's animal organizations um, to help to save assist particular animals or organizations that do beautiful work. So with the books that I've written, uh, a percentage of the proceeds goes to these organizations. And that's what feels right and light to me to do. Thank you. And I'm sure there's people who have some other, you know, amazing uh, ways of contributing. So, you know, you can post those here because I think it's a great conversation and might open people's minds and ideas. And Arjun, this is going to be my last question here. And it has to do with how Gaia and humanity, earthly humanity is being looked after in ways we don't know about. So if you could shine some light on how other universes, how other dimensions, how other beings from other planets and solar systems, parallel, not parallel, all of it. Are there ways that they're already actively assisting humanity and Gaia that we do not know about right now? Oh yes, many, 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 many ways. More than we can even put into words through the channel before you. You have an amount of assistance that is almost beyond comprehension for you, <laughs> for most of you. So what is it that you would like to know about this exactly? Yeah, well, I know you said it's too many to come through the channel, but if you could give us some ways, even if it's just a couple, that we have no idea, but might be very illuminating. I mean, that makes sense to me because when I look at the condition, I think there must be something benevolent and very loving that's intercepting. I know we have free will, but that is definitely not only just assisting us, but when you assist us, you're assisting, we have impact on other people and universes and planets. So if there's anything in particular you might be able to name or any race you know, or beings that are helping us, I would be very interested in that. All right. Well, we will give you two examples to keep it digestible. Obviously, there are many of your own ancestors. We are just talking humans that have transitions to the have transitioned to the non-physical that are assisting many of you. Many of you have guides that are familiar, quite literally, in that way. Also, the indigenous people and the energy vibration that comes with that particular energy field mm. is a very powerful one so to speak to tap into particularly for your western world in order to allow yourselves to remember your own connection to the planet to Gaia so that she doesn't have to lash out as extremely as is happening right now here and there to get your attention 
with the remembrance of your own connection to source, to the planet, the soul of the planet. Like we said before, that is speaking with all of you. You live in her soul, so to speak, in her skin, in that way. Your souls are cradled in hers. You are connected with your earth-oriented lives in this way. She is also guiding her own transition. She understands there is a multitude of directions that she and you together can take this into. So there is that, and this is starting close to home, so that people who resonate more with that idea can begin there and tap into these fields. And then also there are your own, you could say natural medicines and the plant medicines from your own earth, extensions of the earth soul frequency that have very special and specific, you could say messages to deliver to some of you as well. And this is why that indigenous people, shaman energy, is now suddenly gaining so much more quote-unquote popularity in the spiritual scene also in the western world it's because you have understood to some degree on a deeper level that this is information that well to put it lightly comes in very handy now so you could use it you could use it and so you've called it in and that's why some indigenous elders are also traveling the world all of a sudden getting great audiences big audiences to speak to and so forth so there's that on the home base level now multidimensionally speaking and some you could say energy vibrational realities further up the ladder not that there is a better or worse because there is not it is all one eventually and it all harmoniously works together. You can't say that this part of the river is more interesting than that one. It's all the water streaming in the same river in the end. Multidimensionally speaking, you could say that, for instance, the energy vibration of Arcturus is a very strong guiding energy vibration that is being offered to all of you on Earth today, in particular to the children. For the gateway of your sun, your soul. That's why you are focused in your solar system. Your sun is a gateway, a highway, a portal, if you will, of information that is also, in a sense, a highway or a lens, better said, perhaps, to have this Arcturian energy be transported through to your planet and why some people to get back just for a second on that little remark you made about light language why some people when they do sun gazing or when they connect with light in general daylight or even the reflection of the sun through the moon they observe light languages that too is a new form of higher dimensional vibrations being translated into your physical reality. When these people who feel inspired to, in their own artistic way, verbally, vocally, singing or through writing or art, feel inspired to express these light languages, that they feel they are receiving through the multidimensional greater field of all that is, then they in their own way are allowing higher dimensional frequencies to ground on your planet. More interesting from our perspective than addressing every single species or dimensional reality or non-physical group collective that may be assisting earth and humanity in their own way in this moment of your space-time reality co-creation is to talk about how you can choose to apply the information that you're being given. And again, that's why it all comes down to acting on your highest excitement and allowing whatever cross connections you may have with the multidimensional greater field of parallel incarnations and what have you, perhaps as nature spirits and 
Arcturian non-physical being or Pleiadian incarnations or Yahyel incarnations that so many of you now also have as parallel incarnations in your own, you could say over soul cross connection, whatever comes to you through your higher self, wherever it quote unquote originated from is less relevant compared to what you as a human being in this life, in your own uh, unique way, can choose to do with that. So act on. We will use this as our wrap up for this conversation. Act on if you feel inspired to do so. Your highest excitement, your highest enthusiasm in every single here and now moment without pushing or pulling and without insisting where it ought to lead you. And by allowing yourself, if you feel inspired to do so, by taking all the results, quote unquote, or reflections that do come from your endeavor in a loving and optimistic way, see challenges as stepping stones, transform things by integrating them, not by pushing them out, and by being present with what you feel in every single here and now moment and allowing yourself to grow in a gentle way like that. By doing that, you will open up the way for the most smooth, the most effortless, the most resistance-less journey to higher vibrational versions of Earth. And this is what we would like to share with you to wrap it all together in this conversation. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. Arjun, thank you for being the conduit to connect with us and for sharing your wisdom and point of view and your beautiful assistance at a time when I feel like humanity is open and very open to receiving uh, different points of view that really help us right now. So on behalf of myself and all the listeners, the viewers, as always for your graciousness, your, your time and your energy and your wisdom, I'm deeply moved. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. We are deeply moved to, we send you our unconditional love and wish you and everybody who is uh, tuned in or will tune in with this dialogue later down the line in your space-time reality co-creation, a brilliant, magical and creative, inspired rest of your day. Namaste. Namaste. Mm -hmm. And as Vidika slowly comes back and we give her the space and capacity to gracefully do this in her own time, I just want to mention that she offers so much. Uh, she's also an artist and an illustrator. She's also a life coach and um, she's an exquisite artist I need to, to mention. So it's very much worth checking out her materials. Uh, she also does live stream events um, coming up and in the future. We're going to talk about those in a minute. And again, her website to learn more, get on board, give her your uh, name and email so you can, by the way, she doesn't send out many newsletters at all. So for those of you concerned about that, but the rare time she does, they're beautifully crafted and you can feel Vidaka in them. It's totally her voice. So I enjoy getting them myself. And it is design, the number four awareness.com, design for awareness.com. And Vidaka, welcome back. How are you feeling? Still in the process of landing, but I'm back. Yes. Hi. <laughs> okay. And we, we hold the landing strip for you to yeah, thank you. successfully come back in. Thank you. That was beyond a mundo. Like truly, there were so many moments when, uh, you know, first of all, this should be a transcript. I don't know that I'll ever do that, but it should. That's like a book. This was so powerful. Many of the questions were taken by Arjun and put so artfully into ways that people can relate to it from a lot of different points of where they are in their life and apply it. And there was unbelievable wisdom and beautiful, inspiring quotes. So I can't wait to you watch this back.
Yeah, me neither. Yeah. <laughs> I'm curious. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you so much again for 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 being the, you know, with your, your questions and the way you're allowing this to flow. Um, yeah, I'm just so grateful. I really am. <laughs> me as well. I get a tremendous amount out of this. It's a bit mind blowing. And I want you to be able to tell people about some of your events coming up. Uh, this weekend and going forward, if you would mention what they are and where they can sign up for these. Oh, yeah, thank you so much. Um, so you are the easiest way you already mentioned the website design for awareness. If people go there and they just click on the um, um, uh, button in the menu that says events, that's the easiest way to go check in there and see if any events are coming up. It's, you know, in a chronological order. So um, um this weekend and i'm speaking obviously from the moment that we're recording this right now uh upcoming weekend the 11th of september 2022 uh, there will be a live stream event between 8 and 10 p.m uh central european time so that is late morning early afternoon for most people in the us just to give an indication of the time um yeah and and by going through the website and to the events um calendar you will find a link to the ticket service there uh, so people can actually um uh if they come through <laughs> if they get through they can actually ask their own personal question to arjun while i'm in that channeling state as you just observed uh, and we do hope to um, to be continuing regular live stream events for people so they can tune in with the Yael and, you know, uh, download a little bit of those vibes if they resonate with it. So, yeah. <laughs> and just for folks uh, to remind them, once you sign up on her website, designforawareness.com, click on live events and you register and hopefully you're fortunate when you show up live, much recommended that you can get one of your questions directly answered by Arjun. Also, you are going to get the replay. So Vedic is great oh, yeah. about all this technology. And, you know, if you love the live, you'll also get the replay. If for whatever reason you couldn't show up live, but really want the information, you'll still get it through the replay. So she takes great care of you. Yes, there's an MP3 recording of the event that will be shared with any attendees afterwards. Uh, and we will eventually, like I said before in the beginning, sharing the Q&A uh, on a regular basis as downloadable transmissions. Uh, possibly the video recordings of events may be up there as well. So it's all still accessible. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for, for providing some space for sharing that as well. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, very worthwhile. So go to her website. And Vidika, I know uh, you and I are on a journey together, interwoven, and I'm uh, grateful for every time we connect personally, professionally. It's changed my life, frankly. So I look forward. Thank you for the resonance right now that is so delicious. And I look so forward to everything in the future but i am still in the present because i know arjun would want me to be right here right now oh <laughs> <laughs> i'm super i'm super present here as well right now and thank you for the beautiful reminders it's a good reminder for everybody at the end of this whole uh, wonderful dialogue i have enjoyed it so deeply it's always my honor and pleasure to, to do this type of channelings uh, for you and everybody tuning in on this platform. Debbie, I love you. <laughs> I love you so much too. Wow, what an experience this was. And I'm going to end today's show with this quote from Morgan Freeman, learning how to be still, to really be still and let life happen. That stillness becomes a radiance. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. Leave a comment, share. I read all of them. If you're listening to the podcast and you want to see myself and my amazing guests, highly, highly, highly recommended, please go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. Next week on the show, Jimmy Mack is going to be here. He's a multi-talented healer. He heals body, mind, spirit, people, places, pets, and situations. Thank you so much. And whatever was your takeaway, if you could actually get it to one, 
With our June today with Vitica, please post it below in the comments. I'd love to hear. I'm sure we'd both love to read them. We adore all of you and we're here to serve. Have a beautiful day.